The philosophy of high-tech high is founded largely on the idea of kids making, doing, building, shaping, and inventing stuff. The engineers that I know, the architects I know, the artists I know, uh, the great educators that I know, the entrepreneurs that I know, are all sort of perplexed and curious about how they can do it better the next time. And that type of perplexity leads to engagement, it leads to learning, it leads to innovation. We are trying to have that type of perplexity and curiosity get inculcated in our students in everyday practices. In both Linkabit and Qualcomm, one of our problems was being able to hire enough qualified people, enough trained people. And so it was kind of a long-term view to set up high tech high. Oh, I don't think it's like the blue one. I think I know what's wrong. And like if you have tooth spacing in point zero one, the teeth the gears won't connect at all. We didn't know that it was all going to work until maybe four weeks before the exhibition, yeah. three weeks? I mean, I mean we, knew, we knew that pieces of it were working, right? and, and even those pieces were impressive. We had to learn about civilizations, the Mayans, the Romans, and the Greeks, and Scott and Mike didn't want to just teach us this, so they came up with this big wheel, which is a big gear, which has a lot of drawings on it, and it's connected to all these other mechanisms, and they each represented our theory. So, um, I learned about the Mayans, the Greeks, and the Romans, and I really based my theory off of the Romans. Mm -hmm. And why so? Because it has to do with expanding, they were always expanding, mm -hmm. and I, what I realized is that they were expanding not because, you know, not just for the fun of it, but they needed resources mm -hmm. for all the people back home, mm -hmm. you know, Italy and all the ones that they, um, all the new places that they took over. Then they had to, on their own, develop and defend an idea on why they think civilizations rise and fall. So we had to create like a flow chart just explaining what our theory was, and then we got critiques on it, um, and then we created a group one. Another piece is on the mechanical side. They need to take what's already an abstract concept with their theory, and they have to take that and actually physically manifest it. They have some very preliminary metrics they need to use. They know that there's going to be a big wheel turning at a certain RPM. They know how many teeth that is, so they have basically a box to work within, some bounds to work within, and they have to make everything. Yeah, I can get it. So we have an exhibition that we're preparing for right now, and it'll be tomorrow night, and there will be thousands of people here looking at student work. Uh, students presenting their work, visitors looking at the work, um, students presenting their work to each other. And I think that idea of making work public, that's a missing piece to me in schools in general. For most of you, this is probably the biggest project that you've ever exhibited. A lot of you, it's the first project that you've ever really had a public exhibition of, all right? Cool. We're going to be here. If you need to go, we understand, but we're going to keep working for a few hours. Break. This idea of sort of making something and having a public exhibition and having people come look at it, and you have that feeling that we all have, like, how did they do that? You really need to understand it, and you really need to understand why you need to know this to be able to complete the project. What astounded me was that while doing research, my theory, it actually fit with a lot of these civilizations. It wasn't just like some random theory. When kids have that feeling, it's transformative for them. I made this, and everyone's coming to look at it. Mm -hmm.